Hello and welcome to today's Bitrix 24 webinar, Perfect Project Management. Thank you for joining today. Okay, so we'll just go through some introductions first of all. So my name's Sam Connor. I'm part of the sales team here at Interface. Um, we're Bitrix 24 Gold Partners. So we specialize in the Bitrix 24 software, we provide pre-sale support so we can help you with evaluating Bitrix 24. We can see if it's a good fit for what you're trying to achieve. If it is, we can then help with the full onboarding of Bitrix 24 into your business. So we can set it up for exactly how you want the Bitrix system to work. We can then provide our training and ongoing dedicated support services to really ensure you get the most value out of Bitrix 24 moving forward. And if you're interested in the self-hosted edition of Bitrix, then we can provide our own hosting services for you as well. Okay, so if you are maybe new to Bitrix, you're joining today's webinar to get some more information and details about the system, let's just go through actually what Bitrix 24 has to offer. So Bitrix 24, really in summary, it's a collaboration suite of well in excess of 35 different modules that you can use to help you to manage your business, essentially. Now, today in the Perfect Project Management webinar, what we'll be focusing on is the project management and task management tools within the system. Okay, but as I say, across all of our different webinars, we really focus on all the different modules that Bitrix 24 has to offer. Now, in terms of the number of customers, there are over 12 million customers now around the world that use the Bitrix 24 system. And the system, it's available in two different editions, okay? So we have the Bitrix 24 Cloud, and we also have the Bitrix 24 Self-Hosted, also called On-Premise Edition. So essentially the difference there is you can host it on your own local server, on your own private cloud, or we could provide you with our own hosting services. And with the Self-Hosted Edition, you have some greater control in terms of customization. So you've got access to the source code, so it becomes a completely customizable edition of Bitrix 24. Okay, so in terms of pricing, so prices start from approximately $49 per month for a cloud-based edition. And if you're interested in a self-hosted edition, that starts with the Business 50 package, starting at $2,990. Just be a bit wary there, take into consideration for budgeting in year two and ongoing annually for a self-hosted, you need to pay the renewal fee to continue accessing the system, okay. Okay, so moving on then, we're gonna really focus now on the, the project management tools within Bitrix 24. So essentially what we need to do before we have a look at the project management tools, we need to understand why you should use Bitrix 24 for your project management requirements. So essentially Bitrix has a huge number of different tools enabling you to manage your projects in a highly effective and professional manner. So we have project work groups. So essentially you can manage every single project you run in its own centralized area of Bitrix 24. You can just bring in the specific people who need to work on those projects and then we can invite external users as well into those projects for collaboration. We have really powerful task management features so we can manage all of our tasks within each project. You can use automations to streamline the stages of the projects and automate actions at every single one of those stages. And we can even automate the creation of the project inside Bitrix. So a really useful way to do this is say, for example, when the sales opportunity has been one in the CRM system, we could then automatically create a project in the project management area of Bitrix, bringing the correct people together, creating the correct tasks that need to be worked on straight away. So you can save significant amounts of time using the task management features available inside Bitrix 24. Then we also have workload management, so we can use the tools from reports and involvement charts to actually analyze our resources and see who has the capacity 
to be able to work on new projects moving forward. And then we have the different reporting tools from Gantt charts to the reporting wizard. And as we mentioned briefly already, you can invite external users into your projects to collaborate with you. Though just to bear in mind, uh, quite a recent change with external users, you, an external user is now classed as a seat on the system. So that's something important to bear in mind. If you're maybe thinking of adding a lot of external users, they will be classed as a seat on your Bittrex 24 system. Okay, so what we'll do now is let's take a look at how we can create a project inside Bittrex 24. So we're going to create a project group, see how we can then communicate with our colleagues through the project, look at the different Kanban boards and automation features for tasks. And then we'll look at some of the additional functionality within projects such as collaboration streams, instant chats, and we'll look at the calendar management and document sharing functionality available inside projects. Okay, so let's go into our Bittrex 24 system. So, I mean, the features we'll see here, they're available on both the cloud and the self-hosted edition of Bittrex. But what we'll first of all do is let's create a new project inside our system. So let's go into our work groups area. Okay, so within our work groups area here, what we can see are all of the different projects that we are working on. So we can customize this view so you can add or remove functionality. So from the start dates to the, the users on the projects, and I can then view all of the projects that I'm associated with, all those projects that I'm able to request to join. So from here, I can click into a project and view all of that information on the project like so. Now let's say if I wanted to create a new project, so let's go to the create page here. So this is one way we can create a project inside the system. Another feature we've got here is the ability to filter down into projects. So if I wanted to drill down into particular projects inside the system, I have the ability to use the filtering tool to drill down into any projects. But yeah, if I wanted to create a new project inside the system, I can click on the create button here, and then it opens up this page to, first of all, choose the type of project that you want to create. So first of all, we can, we have the project feature there, but you also have the work group feature as well. So just to explain the difference, a work group is an area where you can bring a group of people to collaborate on tasks. Quite often we have a work group for every single department inside a business so you have an area to share information collaborate in a, in a department portal essentially but with a work group you do not have start and end dates for that work group because it is simply a department structure but if we use the project feature here the project can have a start and an end date that's the key difference between those two and then any tasks inside a project the end date of that task cannot surpass the end date of the project. So you have very clear time parameters on a project. So that is the key difference. So if you're needing to have a very clear time frame on your work, you want to be using the project feature here. Okay, so, so from there then, we can give this project a name. Okay, so let's give this a name here. We can then also add a description. So if we wanted to maybe add some more information about what the project actually entails. So when people are added to the project, they have that visibility as to what the project is all about. Okay. We can also choose a theme. So this is what the, the background essentially of the project will look like. So the actual background color and functionality of the view. And then we can also have an icon for the project. And then here we can see, this is where we have the project start and end dates. Okay, so I can select the, the start date for the project. And then I can also select the end date for the project as well. And for reporting, you can choose subjects as well. So you can add subjects for your projects. 
And it's also possible to add tags. So if you needed to for reporting or filtering purposes, you could also add a tag to, to categorize those projects. And then here we can see the additional features. Okay, so on here, what we can do is we can turn on and turn off different functionality for our project. So it may be if we know, for example, that we are going to be using tasks on the project, I can turn on the task feature. And if I know I want to communicate instantly with the rest of the project team, I can turn on the chat feature and I want to store documents. So we have the drive feature turned on as well. So you, you essentially customize every single project that you want to work on. So you can turn on and turn off different functionality, but also you can always come back into here. So as the project's evolving, if you then want to turn on maybe a calendar to store meetings and events, you can come back into here. So you don't have to get this right as soon as you start the project, you can always come back into here. And then we also have the external user feature here. So if you wanted to actually enable external users, maybe such as clients or suppliers to come into your Bittrex system, we could turn on the external user feature to enable people to access the system. But as I say, now an external user will be classed as a seat on the system. So that's something to bear in mind. If you have maybe thousands of external users you would want to add into the system, they would be classed as a seat. On okay, so we've added the functionality for the project. Now we can choose the privacy level. So this is essentially what this will look like for actually regulating who can join and view the project details. Okay, so inside the project board that we just looked at earlier on, if you make the project public, then that will be viewable from here and people can click into the project as and when they like. If you make it private, then the project is private and you can only get access by invitation only or you can request to join. And then if the owner of the project approves your request, you can then access the project. Or you can keep it hidden. So essentially keeping it hidden means only the project owner invites people to that project. You can't even view the project from the project management board to request to join. It's simply hidden away from you unless you are invited to the project. Okay, so that's choosing our type of privacy, and then we can choose our members for the project. So first of all, you have a project owner. So we've selected ourselves there, and then we can also have moderators. So essentially a moderator is essentially a middle layer of management for the project. So you'll see when we go into the project, we can set access rights and permissions across the project. So for example, we may say only the owner and moderators are able to create new tasks inside the project, whereas all of the other employees who are working on the project here that we're inviting in, so we've got Jim, Jane and Mike, those three people won't be able to create tasks on the project. So that's how we can create that layer of ownership within the project. And then the project is created. So from here, we can see it's created the project inside the system here. It brought in the, the members here for the project, and we can see who's been invited in. And we've got our different functionality. So we've got the task management area to manage all of our tasks. And then we've also got our calendar and drive module. So we created these additional features for our project. So we have those features enabled here on the project tool. And as I mentioned, we can set permissions across the project and you can do this on every single project that you are working on. So from tasks to the drive area that we've set up, we can set access rights. So as I said, maybe creating permissions for who can create tasks on the project. We might just say it's the owner and those moderators, or we might say it's all people who have access to the project. So you can customize permissions across the entire project that you're working on here. Okay, so that's a look at creating a project. Now let's go into let's go into a project that we are currently live and managing tasks on. Okay, so inside this particular project, first of all, we have our task management area. So this is where we can manage all of the tasks that are being worked on in this project. And if if you're familiar with Bitrix, 
the view here is similar to the, the list view inside leads and deals. Okay, so inside here, what we're able to do is you can customize the UI here. So you can change what information that you show on the front end here of the task management board. And you've got a filtering tool. So you can drill down into here, maybe look at the tasks based on who's responsible. You can easily drill down into that information. And you can also click into any of these tasks to, to view the task page, essentially. So inside the task, I can see all of the information about the task inside the system. We can see the deadlines and communications. And what's really useful inside here is you can communicate on a task by task basis. OK, so I can communicate with my colleagues on this particular task. So if I want to speak with Mark on this task, then I can say, Okay, and Mark will receive that as a message. So rather than having endless email chains and, and maybe getting lost on chats, you can have very focused communications on every single task that you work on. So you have a, a centralized area for all of those communications. And you can also record time on tasks. So you can see here, we can log the time on our tasks inside the system. So for time tracking purposes, this is really valuable. So you can log time, you can pause, and you could also update. So if maybe you forgot to record the time on the task, you can backdate that and add that time into the system. So let's say if I did two hours last week and I'll just make a note of this. Okay, and so that information I can then save into the task and that will update the task time manually as well. So that's looking at tasks in the list view. There's also, there's many different ways we can view tasks here. So this is the Kanban view. So for every project, you have your own Kanban view to be able to view and manage tasks. So here you can create your own stages for this project. You, this is your own kind of project management board, essentially. So this will impact the view in another project's Kanban display. You can customize this for every project. So we can create the stages and then as we're working on the tasks in a project, I can put these to say under a view and move them into the correct board stage of the Kanban. We also have deadline view. This is probably my favorite view because I think this just gives you a really nice priority view of your tasks inside the system. So with this view here, we can see what is overdue instantly. We can see what's due this week and what's due today. So based on the deadlines of those tasks, Bitrix will automatically place the task into the correct placeholder here. So this, this just gives you the ability to see straight away what needs to be prioritized on this particular project. Okay, we also have a planner view. So here, this essentially uh, the, the big difference between the planner and the Kanban view, this planner view, I can customize this to my very own personal requirements. This is my own personal planner view of my tasks. So changing the stages here like I'm doing, this does not impact anyone else's planner view in Bittrex, okay? This is your own personalized planner view for your particular tasks. So I can change the names, et cetera and set up my own process for, for managing my tasks. Okay, we also have the calendar. So this is looking at here, the calendar view of our tasks. So I can click into here, and this then shows me all of those tasks based on the deadline. So you can see the deadline here is the 25th of August, and that's in the 25th of August calendar that day there. And then another really popular view, this is the Gantt chart view. So here we can see a very high level overview of that task inside the system. And these are the deadlines. So I could change the deadlines here as an admin or if I have permissions, so I can move that task to view and deadline through the system here. And again, all of these different views, you've got the filtering tool. So I could drill down into any of these tasks inside the system like so. Okay, so that's a look at task management. Now, one thing to, to think about as well is creating those tasks. So we can create tasks in the create button here. So then I add the details about my task. And then I can add the description as well.
Okay, so we add that information. You can also add checklists. So maybe there's certain items that need to be completed. You can add all of this information into the project task page here. And then we choose who's responsible. So we, we need to have an owner for the task, but then you can also add participants. So additional people who are maybe working on the task and even on the checklist items here, you could add the participants as well. So you can, you can go very granular as to the actual responsibility within the task itself. And then we can have a deadline for the tasks inside the system. Now, another way to actually create tasks, you can also create task templates. Okay, so maybe this is a task here that is gonna be recreated and used time and time again, rather than having to input all of this information over and over, you could just save this as a template. You click this button here at the bottom, and then that saves it inside the system. So if I wanted to select this template, it will populate with the information, with the checklists, with the people who need to work on the task. So that can save you a lot of time. Okay, so it's a look there at managing tasks in the project. And then we also have the additional features of the project. So first we have the feed area. So any comments I'm associated with, any, any communications, they will be fed into here. Okay, so if I wanted to maybe send a message to the rest of the team, making them aware of the next date for the meeting. Okay, so I can send this message to everyone in the project team, and that message will go into their feed. So they can then communicate back with me. They can add their own likes and comments. So essentially the feed area, it's like an internet board for that particular project. So rather than endless emails or chats, which can you can get lost with all of that information, it's very focused having the feed area to manage your communications on this particular project. Okay, we also got the drive area. So inside here, you've got a document repository, really useful to store documents connected with the project. I can upload my documents into here. And then what's really useful, you can set permissions. So as I mentioned earlier on, around permissions on projects, you can do that even on the individual documents. Okay, so inside here, what I could do is I could choose the users who are, I'm happy to be able to see those documents or I might get full access to read those documents, you can customize the permission access on documents here. Okay, we also have a calendar view. So if you want to just maybe create events or meetings, we could add those into this particular calendar. And so I can see everyone from the project who is available at different times. So we, when I want to add the next events, I can add that into the system like so. And then let's save that inside the project there. So that's now added into the calendar. We also have the chat feature, really useful, really important to be able to instantly communicate with the rest of the project team. You can do instant chats, you can do voice calls, and you can do video calls with any of the users across the project. But you can also do individual conversations as well. So actually, maybe if I just want to speak with John, then I could just send John a message. Okay, so it doesn't just have to be on that project level, you can go more granular and just communicate with an individual within the project as well. Okay, moving on, this is quite a nice feature as well, lists. So lists, if you want to use lists, you'll need at least the professional cloud license. So here, essentially a list is where we can store tables of information. So for example, in this project, we have a list to manage all of our expenses connected with the project. So when we're adding expenses, what we can do is we can run a process so such as an approval process. So we can go to the project manager to either approve or reject inside the system. So you have the ability to manage those processes through here. And then let's say, for example, I might just want to see everything that's still currently pending in the project. I can see those expenses inside the system. So that gives you essentially a high level look at how we can manage a project inside Bittrex, but that's just one project. We might want to be able to get a high level overview of, of all the different projects that we're working on. And that's where we can go into our tasks and projects module. And if we click into the project tab here, this is then the project dashboard. 
So inside here, I, I can see all the different projects I'm associated with. And what's really nice here is I can see a performance score. So this gives me that high level analysis of every project without having to go into each individual project and then having to go into the task area to view the deadlines and see what is overdue. What I can do is I can use the performance score here because this calculates how many tasks are in progress within deadline, but then it also calculates how many tasks are currently ongoing but past their deadline. And that will then detriment to the performance score. So if we've got a project at 100%, everything's on track, anything below 100% and you're starting to see projects that are starting to fall behind. So you really want to then prioritize those projects which are below 100%. And it's also the same for your individual employees. So actually with your employees that you're supervising, I also have analysis to analyze how well they're doing on the, an individual basis with all the tasks that they're working on. So how many are falling behind for that individual person? So here, I might want to just look at all of those employees who I'm re responsible for who are below 50% efficiency. So I can see that particular group of people. So I know this is the group of people that I need to work with and support to help them get their tasks back on track across all the different projects that they're working on. So we, we have some really nice high level dashboard views here to analyze all of the projects and all of the individuals across those projects as well. With just a few clicks of a button, I'm able to get that clear picture as to where support is needed as a manager. Okay, so that is a look at our project groups. Let's just see if we have any questions. Okay, so yeah, question there, is there a limit to the number of projects I can create? So know that that's one of the real benefits of Bittrex. There is no limit to the number of groups you can create in the system. So essentially you could create as many as you require, but one thing I would say, if you are going to create lots of work groups, then it becomes really important to use this filtering tool. So maybe tagging your projects, maybe based on the maybe different purposes for the project, or at least using the filtering tool to drill down into those projects. Because if you've got a lot of projects inside here, then it could become quite complex to be able to filter and find a specific project that you want to get access to. So using the filtering tool then becomes very important. Okay, so moving on, let's now take a look at how we can automate some of the aspects of project management. So for example, creating a new project as an example. What we can do is we could actually automate the creation of the project using automation rules inside Bitrix. Okay, so what we can do here as an example, is let's go into our CRM system. So one thing we can do inside the CRM system, now to be able to do this, you would need at least a professional cloud license because we need to use the workflow here, which is the business process designer tool feature. So this would require a professional cloud license. But what we can do here is essentially connect the CRM side of Bitrix with the project management tools. So what we can do is once a project, sorry, once a deal has been won by the sales team, we could create an automation here, which automatically creates a project in the project management area of Bitrix. And it brings specific people who need to be working on the project. So this is say the customer success team who are working on every customer project. And then we also have the mandatory tasks that need to be completed. So in any project, there's gonna be certain tasks that have to be completed we can create the business process here. So this is automatically triggered when the deal hits the one stage of the pipeline here. So let's just see how this works. So if we go into one of our deals that we're currently working on, so we can see here, Techco front of house services. As we progress the deal through the system here, when we get to say the invoicing stages, we use automations, and now let's close this deal inside the system. Now the job has been paid. We can trigger that workflow. So now this is going to create 
a project management group inside the project management area of Bittrex. So you can see now we're getting notified the project has been set up. We can see the tasks now inside here that have been created. And now let's go into our work group area. Okay, and now let's just search for that Techco front of house services. So you can see here that Techco front of house services, so it's took, taken the name from the deal, has automatically been created. And if we go into the task management area, Bittrex, it's created all of those tasks inside the system here. So just start to see how you could use the power of automation to save so much time. Businesses spend hundreds of hours creating tasks, creating projects manually. Bittrex can automate that whole process. So just think about the amount of time that could save your organization. That, in terms of a value, start to think how that could save so much commercially as Bittrex can automate that process. But for not just automating the process, it takes out any human error because the whole process is structured and automated. So you remove any human error that could come into the creation of the project. So it's created all the tasks inside the system. And then it's also brought in the group of people that need to work on the project. So not only is it saving time, it means you can start working on the project straight away, which will improve your relationship with the customer because you're starting to trigger the work directly through the system here. So that is the power of using automations inside the CRM and then into the project management area of Bittrex. And another area we can set up automations is actually on the task level itself. So we mentioned how you can have a Kanban view inside projects. So this is looking at that BizTech project we were in earlier on. And we have the stages there that we can move our tasks through. Now, on each of those stages, what we can do is we could set up automation rules. So whether that's changing the status, whether it's maybe changing who's responsible for the task, that's a really useful way to use this feature. There's lots of different automations you can set up when the task is at a specific stage of the Kanban process. But what we can also do is we can set up triggers, which is this top tier here. And a trigger will automatically update what stage that task is at. So a really good example here is if the task becomes overdue, so essentially if the task is not completed by its deadline, then what we can do is we can automatically, no matter where it's at in this process, it will automatically be moved to the urgent stage because it's overdue. It's running this trigger here. And now it's become overdue, it's at the urgent stage. And then we're automatically, we have an automation set up on that stage. It's changing who is responsible for that task. So it's gone to the senior project manager automatically. And then we're also automating a notification to go out to the whole project team to make them aware the task is now overdue and it needs to be prioritized. So you can see there how we can use the power of automations to now start to, to proactively get this task back on track, get it completed as quickly as possible using the power of automations. So these are some really powerful tools that we have within projects. So you don't have to do everything manually. We can create projects automatically. We can automate actions at every stage of a task in those Kanban boards. So as I say, though, for the business process designer tool, you would need to have at least a professional cloud license. OK, and moving on. So just to now briefly touch on the extranet. So we have discussed this quite a, a lot already. But as we mentioned, you can invite your clients or you know third parties into your, your projects in Bittrex. So here is a view of our extranet site. So as a client here, I can see my BizTech project. So I, I have access to that project. And then I can communicate with the project team. I can see the tasks that I'm able to view based on permissions. And essentially, this is a portal area where I'm able to view all of that information. And for example, here I can see that message we sent out to the whole project team. I can see that about the next meeting on Friday at 10, all that information I'm able to access through here. But again, we, we are very structured in terms of the permissions on the extranet. So they don't have access to the CRM or you know any other work group area. All they would have access to is the project 
that they are assigned to as a, as a client or as a, a third party. You don't need to worry about them being able to view other information inside the system. Just the one thing to point in is how an extranet user now, it is classed as a seat on the Bittrex system. So you need to take that into consideration based on what license you are looking at. Okay, so no more questions right now. Let's just move on to look at some of the some of the, the self-hosted benefits. Okay, so we've mentioned a lot how this functionality we've seen today is available on both the cloud and the self-hosted, apart from really that automation processes and the business process design at all. But if you are interested in a self-hosted edition, one of the key benefits is that, that level of customization. So for example, on the extranet side, we can set up pop widgets here with links to external areas. We can customize the UI more. And where the customer logs in to the portal here, a key difference with the self-hosted, that can be a branded portal. So we can strip out the Bittrex branding and add your own corporate identity and look and feel to the system. So it feels like they're logging again to your own organization's portal where their project is. So it gives you that more professional look and feel to the system. And then we also have more advanced automation. So we have full access on the self-hosted system to the full API and also the source code. So if you wanted to use the API, we could integrate with another system to create maybe a different triggers to create automated actions. So it just gives you greater flexibility around automating processes. And then we also have that customization feature there. So we can use the source code to create custom pages. So maybe within your task management area, you want to create maybe additional pages or maybe a new reporting module inside the system. You have that control with the self-hosted edition. And that kind of leads on to the dashboard feature. So we could also build kind of your own dashboard modules inside the Bittrex 24 system as well. If what the standard functionality doesn't give the self-hosted system with that source code, it gives you the, the platform to be able to extend the customization to exactly how you need the system to work. Okay, so that is the end of our perfect project management webinar today. Thank you very much for joining. Here you can see a selection of our up and coming webinars. So we are here every other Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. And if you want to register for those webinars, please do go to interface.com forward slash webinars. And if you have any questions in the meantime, before the next webinar, you can contact us sales at interface.com and one of our team will be happy to discuss your questions and set up a call with you to answer those for you. Thank you very much for your time today. I look forward to seeing you on our next and future webinars. Thank you very much. Bye for now.